Hello and welcome to Meet the Founder here at Model AI, the video series in which I sit down with the key players who were instrumental in making the company a reality. I'm Tommy Thompson and in this episode I sit down with Julian Tegelius, one of the heads of research for Model AI, a gentleman who always has some keen insights into the state of AI research for video games. So without further ado, let's get started. For yourself, Julian, as a co-founder and also then director of research, how do you end up in this situation? What brought you to working in game development and research to begin with? So obviously, like everybody else, I always play games since an early age. Um, but uh, what I really wanted to do was understand the mind and build artificial consciousness. So I started philosophy and psychology because I thought that would get me there. Uh, what I didn't realize that was that to understand the mind, you really needed to build it. So I took this long circumstantial path that I tried to get into robotics and evolved neural networks that could control robots. And then I discovered that, wow, you could do the same research in video games. So I started doing research on uh, ways of uh, learning player behavior on video games. And that brought me to research on automatically generating game content and automatically designing games and imitating players. And after doing this for quite a while and advancing up the career ladder in academia, I, together with several of my colleagues and friends, realized that to really make an impact on games, we needed to start a company, build a product that people can use and take all this amazing research we've done on uh, AI for video games to market. I'm not sure this is going to help me understand intelligence, uh, but I do think it's going to help us make better games. And so I think this is quite interesting. You know, we're coming from the academic background, a lot of research in that field. Were you confident that Model AI would find a market when you started developing it? Because you're building on ex existing academic research, which is can be quite esoteric, and it doesn't necessarily fit with how you know game development companies and productions typically operate. It's true that academic research can be pretty esoteric and kind of divorced from the real problems facing people who develop games out there in the trenches. I know, I mean, you don't develop games in the trenches, but you get what I mean. Um, but I thought there were so many unexplored opportunities for AI in games, and I'm talking about modern AI um, built on modern search methods and modern machine learning methods, that basically there were several different product market fits we could have achieved. Um, at the moment, we're very largely pivoting towards um, behavior testing and artificial behavior, but there's a bunch of them we could do. So I was pretty comfortable that we would fit, we would find some product market fit. The question was which one? So being confident in the company is one thing, I guess, but was there any big concerns that you had getting started? Was there something that was maybe keeping you up at night thinking, is this is this is the big issue that's potentially going to impact Model AI's success? The big issue for Model AI from the beginning was how you generalize, because we knew we could do these things for one particular game, but how could you bring it to a large number of different games? Um, and this is something that we were thinking of from day one. We're still thinking about it, but we have a number of paths to um, actually achieving this. And I would say we have achieved this to a pretty good degree, um, the generality between games. Um, part of it has to do with our product and how well it interfaces with existing games and game engines. But um, another part of it has to do with how you can generalize the behavior and learning behavior that can be used across different games having this agent able to work in different games and be able to just drop your the, the product in, the architecture, and then say, okay, we're going to be able to create bots that play in different types of games that people are making often when they're incomplete. And I guess this speaks to, I mean, in order to create that product, you had to have a team in order to make that happen. And I guess how important has the team been, and particularly the composition of industry and academic experience, how important has that been in building up the platform and also the success that Model AI has had to date? Yeah, it's interesting because when we started this, we were um, largely a team of academics, um, although some of them, or like half of us were mostly academics, um, half of us for some game industry. Um, but um, our 
CEO also has academic experience. Um, and we wanted to marry this somehow. Um, so our first round of hires was indeed largely academic. And we basically looked at um, the best people in game AI that were on the market at the time and went up to them and asked, hey, um, do you want to join us? And um, they did, which we were very happy, very happy for. So we had some extremely high quality people there. Um, as we've been building a product and to all the customer interactions, we've seen a number of needs we didn't have a clue about before. I mean, we've had to hire people to do marketing, for example, and in various other business development roles that we've had to grow in. But I think we we started with a very strong technical core. Um, and um, I, from my perspective, I'm very happy we did that because we're starting at um, in, with the core of the company. Um, and then we're sort of filling out um, the other roles as we go along. This actually brings up a question that I hadn't originally thought of, but for yourself, what is what do you think is the most interesting challenge you have to face now running a company that you're not used to, given your existing experience being in academia? <laughs> running a company is in many ways different from academia. Um, that I mean, the funding model is very different. Um, and you have to worry about customers in a way you never do in academia, um, which makes it very different. Um, uh, many other parts are very similar. The spirit of building a team that works on a joint goal is very similar. And the importance of having that right atmosphere and the attitude among the team, um, how crucial it is and, and the way you build this, that's also very similar because, you know, if morale is lacking, then it's not going to work out. Um, I think we've learned a lot about um, sensitivity to customers' needs um, to the point that we are much better at that now than, than we were when we started. And this is great because it allows us to build, um, I mean, it allows us just to refine the product market fit, build things that people, um, and that people need. Um, whereas the team management and the sort of team spirit, I think we've been great at keeping up the um great sort of um coherence of vision and momentum we had from the start so here we are you're now model ai's four years uh in and going strong i guess for yourself looking back on that what's the thing that you're most proud of of everything that model ai has managed to achieve to date i'm proud of a number of things i to begin with i'm very proud of the team we built and the spirit we created and um, the the feeling that all of us want to actually build awesome stuff for action games together. But um, I'm uh, also proud of like particular technical achievements um, to take those things that are out there and we can tell people about. Um, of course, I'm proud of the collaboration with King where we um, produced um, tools that help build levels for this extremely successful game, Candy Crush. Um, uh, and how we could use machine learning to enable procedural level generation uh, at a scale and for a very, very highly commercially relevant game that we haven't seen before. This also led to some interesting technical advancement that we published in the literature. Um, I'm also proud of among the work that we have not released publicly. I'm very proud of our ongoing work on learning um, foundation models of behavior that is both pushing the envelope academically and integrating with the actual products we're building to produce new capabilities. And I think that when we actually make this version of the product widely available, it's going to uh, blow some minds. I mean, it's blown my mind already. Thinking about the foundation models and particularly the rollout of the product as you see it moving forward, like what's your big priority in terms of growth yeah, either in the product itself or like still untackled research questions that you're interested in pursuing? A large um, body of research questions that we are still working to figure out is to actually control the learned models, how to make them do not just represent human behavior, but represent human behavior that varies across scale, across play styles. And we've done a lot of work in trying to characterize different playing styles, for example. But what are the um, emergent dimensions of play style that we can get um, and that generalizes enough across games 
um, <clears throat> uh, so that we can then basically give game developers and game testers and, and everyone in the sort of um, skill chain, um, everyone the right levers to pull to sort of control the behavior. Um, and, and of course, there's a amount of different skills, like you want like um, um, a human to play like a human with this game, but with what kind of like skill level um, and in what kind of different skills are they good at strategy, good at um, good at the Twitch stand, the Twitch aspect of gameplay and so on. Um, but it's a very interesting challenge that is very, very data um, intensive. Um, this also relates to another challenge, which is basically getting all the data we need um, in a coherent enough format and building. Um, we have a data pipeline, but keep um, sort of improving this because we to our product will get better. The more companies we work in with, the more different kind of data we can find from a variety of different sources. How do we integrate it? Um, and then, of course, we have um, we we are always looking to improve the architecture of um, uh, of the model themselves. And uh, here we're closely following the academic literature and looking at a number of different um, architectural advances as they come out, basically. And this is uh, one of these huge advantages of having like um, a fruit still left in the academic world, because you sort of, you're basically drinking from the firehouse, fire hose of, um, um, uh, of uh, transformer model improvements um, and new ways of thinking about um, 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 how to use convolutions um, and so on. Thinking about this, why should companies be reaching out to work with Model AI? What is it that Model AI is doing that nobody else is offering right now? I think we're doing several things that nobody else is offering. We have extended all this competence around different aspects of modern game AI that I don't honestly see anywhere else. And compared to like a university research lab, obviously we have a lot more experience working with customers. We have a built product. Um, um, uh, or actually several products that um, is ready for deployment and we have experience working on target to get projects up and running. Um, compared to building a lot of these things in-house, for example, I think we're just far ahead when it comes to the core machine learning knowledge and the core AI knowledge we was talking about search algorithms, for example, um, that, again, I don't see in many other places. A fairly mature project at this point and um, stage, and we have a set of customers, um, and we have experience integrating the product as it is. Plus, on top of that, um, we're continuously working and improving it on the um, uh, on the research side. So I think we have a package that you don't really find anywhere else. Many thanks to Julian for taking time out of his busy schedule to come and have a chat with me today. And of course to yourselves for sticking around and watching this video all the way to the end as well. It's a little bit difficult these days on YouTube. Nonetheless, stick around here at Model AI for even more insights into the future of artificial intelligence for video game development.